Well, here we go. It's bombs away, Biden. More news about the shenanigans of illegal aliens, sober and drunk. And if you're a white man, you better get out your checkbook. Stay tuned, everybody. For the best meat you have ever eaten in your life, go to samsbutchershop.com. Enter the coupon code TRIPLE T when you check out for a 10% discount. Hey everybody, it's Trailer Trash Tim. It's just me today. Marina is on duty. She's uh, covered up with a lot of things to do. So uh, she will uh, join us tomorrow for the live stream, uh, Lord willing. Uh, that is it. Let me remind you, that's at 3 o'clock p.m. Sunday, February the 4th. Today is Saturday. This will be Sunday, tomorrow, February the 4th at 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. If you can make it, we would love to have you. We're going to have a good time, and uh, I look forward to it. All right, I, there's so much going on. Uh, there's, I, I'm, I'm just going to cover what I can, but I'm going to go in order of importance. And, of course, what has to lead is the war. We are, we are at war, um, officially, unofficially, does it even matter. No declaration of war from the Congress, of course, just another president breaking the law, ignoring the Constitution, and and, and, uh, and going to war with another nation. That's what's happened here, of course. Uh, as far as we know, we're not dropping bombs on Iran proper. It's more of uh, the usual, a proxy-type war. But as you know by now, we have uh, launched bombs, dropped bombs on uh, Iranian targets in uh, northern Syria and also in um, Iraq. So it's bombs away Biden. Here we go. Now, we could get mired down into the details of what's happening here. Uh, a little bit of backstory, as you know, um, we suffered the loss of three U.S. service members, apparently at the hands of uh, Iranian uh, revolutionaries, shall we say. And uh, this elicited this response from Joe Biden. And of course, he was receiving calls on both sides of the aisle to uh, retaliate against Iran in some way. There were some uh, people in Washington, such as uh, Senator Cornyn of Texas, um, Cotton of Arkansas, and of course, little Lindsey McCain uh, Graham <clears throat> calling for uh, Biden to basically just wipe Iran off the face of the earth as if there would be no response from uh, Iranian allies in the world. These people are such shallow thinkers You've got to look at things over the long term. No matter what it is in your life, you've got to look at the actions and the consequences. You've got to look at the ramifications that happen for any behavior you or anything that you do. There's always ramifications, either good or bad. And you can't start dropping bombs on any other nation anywhere in the world and expect that there's going to and not expect there's going to be Something called blowback, and I covered this in a video I did several months ago. You can look down below and search for that video. I, I recommend it. It's good. Uh, blowback is a very real thing. This is not going to end with whatever our action is uh, in retaliation toward Iraq. Uh, there will. It's just going to keep going back and forth until this thing escalates and gets out of control and that's what these people in Washington are not thinking of. Or maybe they are and they just don't give a rip. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But I have maintained that the question that must be asked, the question that so few people are asking, and of course the question that nobody's in Washington is answering, is the simple question of this. Why are we there in the first place? Why do we have a base in Jordan? Why do we have personnel in Jordan? Why do we have military personnel in Syria on this hot in this hot spot in this border? Why do we have military personnel in Australia in Africa? Why can somebody answer this question with a logical answer? How can it be that the United States of America can have troops in Syria and Jordan, 
but not in Texas on the Rio Grande River. How can it be that we can defend the Ukrainian border, the Syrian border, and on and on and on it goes, but we can't defend our own border. I know I sound like a broken record, but the it, this is the question every American needs to demand their politicians answer. Why are we there in the first place? Do you know how we could have saved these three lives that were lost last week? Is the answer not self-evident? There is no need for us to have military personnel in that part of the world whatsoever. They're in Jordan. Jordan's got a military. Let Jordan take care of their border for heaven's sakes. Syria has a military. Let Syria take care of their own border for heaven's sake. Is this not just obvious to anyone with a logical, with, with, uh, you know, with critical thinking? Does it not, not just make sense? Can you not just guard your own border and leave it at that? Or is that just too simplistic? Well, you know, we've got to ultimately uh, keep the, the old Soviet Union in check. I mean, they might expand their border. Well, I, you know, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't, but that's in a whole nother hemisphere. All I know is our problems are not being addressed on our border. Can we at least agree to defend our own border first before we start worrying about anybody else's? Or is that too much to ask? This is a question that every American needs to ask of their representative. And I saw this on Twitter today, uh, and I, I double-checked to see whether this was correct or not. Uh, and I, for the life of me, I forgot... I forget who posted it, so I apologize for that. But this person posted, in answer to the question of why are we there in Jordan, they said 500 billion, b -b 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 billion barrels of crude equivalent shale oil is in Jordan. That number is unfathomable to me. 500 billion barrels of crude equivalent shale oil oil is in Jordan. This I verified on several websites, among them peakoil.com and oilprice.com. Now, here's a question for you. Who is the number one nation in the world in developing shale? That would be the United States of America. Is it possible? I'm just asking a question, folks. Is it possible that we have our troops there to guard taxpayer-funded security guards watching over this oil? I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer or not. I don't know if the answer is yes or not. I just don't know. I'm asking the question, is it possible? Does that, is it logical to assume that might be have something to do with it? Why else would, would we be there? Why else? I mean, you've got that, or you've got, of course, the military-industrial complex, uh, complex that President Eisenhower warned us about, and we ignored him. President Kennedy tried to uh, listen to what his predecessor said, and he got killed for it because he tried to dismantle the CIA and the NSA and get us out of these conflicts around the world, and he got killed for it. So... You know, the military-industrial complex is a for-profit organization. So much so that the Pentagon can't account as of uh, September the 12th, 2001 for trillions of missing dollars. And I want to say something before I move on. Never equate love of military with patriotism. The founding father, fathers of the United States didn't do that, would not do that, and neither should you if you are an American citizen. Love of country is what is patriotic, not love of military, because the military is often used for very unpatriotic things, ladies and gentlemen. We should always remember that. There's some bad people in the military. Hello, General Milley and your cohorts. How about the commander-in-chief, for heaven's sakes? All right, let me move on. I got a couple of stories I have got to cover with regard to illegal aliens. These are not migrants. 
These are not immigrants. It is true they are migrating. They're migrating like a hurricane, but that term migrants, uh, it kind of has the scent of legality attached to it. This is not what we're talking about. These are criminals. These are people knowingly breaking our law or they are crossing the border against their will because they are tools and pawns of cartels that are selling them into sex traffic and what have you. Whatever the case, it's a lot of illegal activity by illegal aliens. And the House today, this story blows my southern mind. This headline reads, Two-thirds of House Democrats vote against a bill passed to deport illegal immigrants with DUI convictions. Listen at this story, folks. Just a couple of paragraphs here. Over two-thirds of House Democrats voted Thursday in opposition. This was today, Saturday. Okay, Thursday. Voted Thursday in opposition to a bipartisan measure that was passed, and if enacted, it won't be, could result in immigrants living in the United States illegally being deported for a DUI conviction. Under the Protect Our Communities from DUIs Act, quote, driving while intoxicated or impaired, unquote, would be grounds for, quote, barring a non-U.S. national alien under federal law from admission into the United States, unquote, or deporting the individual. Listen at this. The vote tally was 215 Republicans and 59 Democrats in favor of the bill and 150 Democrats, including House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, voting against it. The bill passed 274 to 150. Now it'll go over to the Senate. I don't know if it'll pass there or not. And then it goes before brainless Biden, who will probably veto it, no doubt. But do you get the gist of this bill? The bill is basically saying this. If you are an illegal alien in the United States of America and we catch you driving drunk, we're going to deport you. Can you noodle this out on your own? Can you see the absurdity of this? I mean, does it? it's, it's like an elephant in the room. Do I even need to point out the logical fallacy of all this? Do I even need to explain the elephant in the room? So if you're an illegal alien and you have a DUI, well, by George, now we're going to deport you. Is the question not obvious? If they're an illegal alien, why do you have to wait for them to get a D-freaking-U-I? If they're illegal aliens, they are here illegally, they are breaking the law, what should we do? Deport them for crap's sakes. You're going to wait around for them to get a DUI before you deport them? This is like, oh my gosh, it's like pulling hair. Or hen's teeth. I have no hair to pull. I'm losing more and more of it. This... (laughs) Of course, if I were in Congress, I would vote for this bill. Duh. But the fact that you have to say we're going to deport illegal aliens who have DUIs, is that not just self-evident? Should they just not be deported, period, as soon as you find them? I mean, what happens if they go before a judge? They're an illegal alien with a DUI, and the judge says, I see here you're an illegal alien. Well, I I think we'll probably just... uh, release you back into the streets. Oh, wait, I see you've got a DUI. I guess we better uphold the law this time. This is just so beyond absurdity. It, it just insults whatever intelligence I've got, and it should you too. Now, let me move on to another story, which you probably heard about already, that happened in New York and involves more illegal aliens, ladies and gentlemen. You may be aware, you've probably seen on the news, that last Saturday, uh, four illegal aliens attacked 
New York Police Department uh, cops in New York. This is all over the internet. You can go Google it. Uh, four illegal aliens attack New York City cops, uh, and you can see the video. Uh, they beat the crap out of these cops. Illegal aliens beating up two New York City. I'm telling you, you could not pay me enough money to be a cop in New York City. I don't know what they make. You couldn't pay me a half a million dollars a year to do it. I, I don't know if that would do it. It might take a million. And even then, I'd have to think about it. How, who in their right mind would want to be a cop in New York City where basically you're working for this train wreck of a mayor, Eric Adams, who does not have your back, even though he himself is a former cop? How on earth? I mean, you leave for in the morning to go start your shift not knowing if you're going to come back home to your family at night. And I realize that's the case with all cops, but I mean, for heaven's sakes, the sticks in Alabama, the cops probably going to go home safely. But in New York City, the odds are a lot greater that he won't. How much money would it take you to be a New York City cop? I, I, there's just no way. I couldn't do it. So here's the, here's the outrageous part of the way, if that's not outrageous enough. Four illegal aliens attack two New York City cops and beat them up, steal a cell phone. In addition to that, just, you know, further insult. So they go before the judge Thursday, and what does the judge do? Does he send them to jail straightway? Does he give them bail of a million dollars and send them away with the bailiff? Remember, this is New York City, right? Four illegal aliens attack New York City cop. Two New York City cops beat the stuffing out of them. They go before the New York City judge who lets them free. You can leave. You're free. No bail. I'm not making this up. It's on video. You can watch it on the internet. They just let them go. And when the judge let them go, they the, the two that I saw on camera, they exited the courthouse, giving everybody the old double bird. There were film crews filming these illegal aliens as they left scot-free from the courthouse. And they responded to being set free by this insane New York City judge by flipping the whole country off. They're flipping you off. They're flipping me off. Now, how were they set free? Let's, let's say for a moment it makes sense that they would be set free for attacking cops. Well, okay, guess what? They're still illegal aliens, and they're just set free to run amok in our nation by a New York City judge. Can you believe this? Do we live in bizarro world or not? If a judge set me free after I broke the law, I would be overwhelmingly grateful to that judge for showing mercy on me. But these illegal aliens, they get set free. They should be, have been sent to prison straight away and then deported back to wherever the hell they came from. But it, and are they grateful? Not only are they not grateful, they flip us all off. How does Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, respond to this? I'll tell you how he responds. Mayor Eric Adams allocates $50 million in prepaid cash cards to be distributed to illegal aliens. In a sane world, you would say, oh, come on, man, you're making that up. And in a sane world, I would be making it up. April Fools, I'm not making it up. It's the truth. $50 million in prepaid cash cards given out to illegal aliens. I've got an idea. Does anybody know what the state motto for New Hampshire is? Isn't it, uh, don't tread on me, don't tread on us? I got a new motto for the state of New York. God bless the poor people who live in the upstate New York where there's still some semblance of sanity. But if you're in the city, it's just nothing but an insane disaster. But I've got a new motto for the state of New York. Are you ready? 
There you go. There you go, New York. Are you an illegal alien? Go to New York. Go to New York and beat up a couple of cops. Nothing's going to happen to you. New York has got their flag flying high in the wind, and Mayor uh, Eric Adams and Governor Kathy Hochul are saying to you, come tread on us. What a disgrace. All right, one more story I'm going to end with on this bright and beautiful Saturday. I think it's going to be raining tomorrow, so we'll enjoy it while we can. This is just... (laughs) Oh, you're going to love this. If you are a white American man, you better grab your wallets, Billy Bob. There is a doctor... uh, who uh, is a psych a a psychiatrist, and her name is Callie Nicole Hobson. Doctor Callie Nicole Hobson is a person of color. I don't know what her pronouns are, uh, <clears throat> but she looks like a female. She's a, uh, a a black female. Uh, by the way, I, I just can't get into the African American, uh, and I'll tell you why. If you're born here, you're not an African American. You're an American, okay? Uh, if you're born here, would you not be a Native American? I'm not a racist for broaching this subject, but I got to cover this. My ancestry is uh, from Wales. That. Does that make me a Welsh American? As much as I would love to go to Wales one day and examine the old family tree, that doesn't make me a Welsh American. Marina's ancestry is Ireland. She's Irish, has Irish ancestry. She doesn't claim to be an Irish American. By the way, a man from Wales and a woman from Ireland? I don't know. Because, see, I'm a, I'm Welch. That means I'm a blue blood. I'm probably in line for the throne when you get right down to it. If there's ever a tragedy, they might be calling me. King Timothy the First, right? Okay, yeah, good luck with that. So, you know, I don't have any problem with anybody calling me white, a white guy. Okay, so I don't, I'm not going to hesitate to call a black guy a black guy. It doesn't matter, okay? Your skin color is just your skin color. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you're a racist because you say that. I just wanted to clarify that. It, it means no, it's not a it's not denigrating to call a black American a black American in, in lieu of saying African American. For heaven's sakes! By the way, did you know there's a lot of white people in South Africa? If they migrated to the United States <clears throat> legally, would they also be African Americans. Do you see how silly it gets? But this doctor, Callie Nicole Hobson, has called on what did you know this is Black History Month? I don't know who decided that, but that's what it is. But that's what this has to do with. Dr. Callie Nicole Hobson has called on white men to show that they are dedicated to equity by donating part of their salary to black women for Black History Month. There you have it, white boys. Get out your checkbook. You got to donate part of your salary to black women to honor them for Black History Month. You got it? So go get your checkbook. Go get your checkbook, get in your car, and go to town and see if you can find a black woman anywhere or black women anywhere. And just go up to them and say, I know I'm a white guy and I'm the source of all evil in America right now, but I got my checkbook and I want to write, can I get your name so I can write a check out? Because together with you, I want to celebrate Black History Month. Callie Nicole Hobson is a psychiatrist at the Children's Physician Group, Eggleston Hospital in Atlanta. Uh, Dr. Hobson, a pity on any child that you are 
treating and you're a psychiatrist, God help the children you get hold of and treat. But I have a question for you, Dr. Hobson. You say that I, as a white boy in America, need to donate part of my salary to black women, That's those are your words, to black women to celebrate Black History Month. Okay, I'm all ready to follow your demands. But I'm wondering if you can help me because I have a black woman I want to send a check to, and I'm wondering if you have her address, because Dr. Hobson, I want to celebrate Black History Month in a grand manner by sending a portion of my salary to Oprah Winfrey. Do you by any chance have Oprah's address? You may say, trailer trash Tim, that's absurd. Isn't it? But isn't what she is saying a little absurd? This doctor of psychiatry? Good old Jerry Clower, the old country boy comedian from Mississippi, South Mississippi, used to say of people like Dr. Kelly Nicole Hobson, this here woman is educated beyond her intelligence. Touche, Jerry. Rest in peace my friend. All right. I'd love to hear what you got to say about everything I've discussed today. Give me your comments down below. Please do that. I love to read your comments. I respond to them uh, when I get a chance. Do me a big favor, please, and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would appreciate that very much. And subscribe to the Triple T channel if you have not and come join our growing community. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget the live stream tomorrow at 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be here. Don't you miss it either. See you tomorrow.